Hi, Teffel Dude here, and today I'm going to show you how to install Windows 11 on a 10 year old laptop. I'm going to be installing it on this Samsung laptop, which is about 10 years old, but you can install it even on a brand new laptop using this method. In fact, you can even install it on a very old laptop, which had Windows 7. The reason for this is, when you download the ISO file, we're going to use a program called Rufus. And on Rufus, it asks you, what do you want to do? Do you want to use the secure boot, which is the top one for new computers, or the middle one, which is what we have, old computers without secure boot? So we're going to use this. There is a third option, Windows to go, but that's just putting it on a pen drive, and that's where your Windows exists. But I'll show you that in another video. So without further ado, let's move on to how we're going to do this. So here is our PDF and I've made this, printed it and I'm going to put it for you to download and you can see these are the simple steps we're going to do. So once you've looked at this, you'll have no worries how easy it is for you to do. So step one, just back up your data. I bought this separate SSD card and I took this one out, put a new one in so that I can install it fresh on there. And if anything goes wrong, I've got my Windows 10 here and I don't have to worry about anything. That's a good idea to do that. Otherwise, just back up your data to a pen drive. Now, when you do buy a USB stick, please make sure it has this blue lining in the middle. That means it's 3.0 and that's the fastest one. Please don't use 1.0, it might give you problems. Then we're going to download Windows 11 ISO from this website. Just click on this on the document I give you. Then we're going to download Rufus. Now Rufus enables us to put that ISO file onto the USB stick in the manner that we want. Now there are other settings there about NTFS, but that's for if you want to put it on a Surface Pro. Now I've made a video of how to put Windows 11 on a Surface Pro and you need to change the settings a bit. We're going to do the one for the laptops. Now with this MBR GPT, you need to know what your computer hard drive is. Most of them will be GPT. The older ones, very older ones, will be MBR. But a quick way to discover this is this way. Go into computer management and click on these icons and we'll be doing that too. Number five, we'll go into the BIOS. Now, if you're not sure how to do that, these are a list of computers whereby as soon as you press the button on, you have to madly click F1 or F2 in order to get into the BIOS. And that's where we go to change the settings so that your computer will allow you to boot from this USB stick. Don't worry, it's not, it's not rocket science. Anyone can do this. Please have a go at it. You're not going to damage your computer. Another way to get into the BIOS is uh, go to your recovery, restart, and you'll end up in picture one. Or hold the shift, press the power button on, and you'll end up in picture one again. Simply click troubleshoot, advanced options, UFI settings, restart, and you'll end up looking at the BIOS as we see it here. But like I say, the quickest way to do it is just simply press F1 and F2 madly as you turn on the computer, and that will direct you here straight away. And the way you navigate through this system is using the arrow keys or the escape button. And here are the things that we're going to do when we're in there. We simply disable the fast boot, disable any secure boot, open up any legacy, uh, we're going to move the USB to the top, so it's the first boot option. And then we're going to exit F10. We're going to do all that. It's going to be very simple. Now, once we've installed the Windows 11, 
it will be activated. If you had Windows 7 or 10 before, you'll see like this. This is from the version I did this before, and this is what I got. It's activated. It knows I had Windows 10 before. I'll also show you how to add these icons that are necessary. And one more thing, you don't need to have a Hotmail account. If you can see here, it says local account. So I'll show you a trick in how to do that. Now, finally, you're going to need your drivers. And we download this driver booster, which is free. You do not need to pay for it. Yes, you can, but you don't need to. Plus, it means you don't have to go to the website, download all the Samsung drivers or the Acer drivers. That can be complicated. You don't need it. Windows 11 has a lot of drivers that you already need. And Driver Booster, as you can see here, I updated 18 of the drivers for free. I didn't pay for it. And that's what you can do too. So without further ado, let's move on to doing it. Now, the first thing we need to do is download the Windows ISO. And if you open this document, you can actually click on the link and it takes us right there. Don't click on any of these things that you see at the beginning. Just scroll down and go to select download ISO image. When you click the download, you'll get the option for which language you want. I'll choose the United States. And then you simply click the 64-bit download and you're given 24 hours to do that. So if I click it now, you'll see at the bottom here, it's downloading. However, I have downloaded it already. You can see it's gonna take about 20 minutes, but I've downloaded it already. So let's cancel that. Now let's move on to the next part where we have to download the Rufus. So here, as we scroll down, click on Rufus. And here, simply download the latest Rufus software. Again, it's downloaded. Now once it's there, I can click out of here. And all I have to do is type Rufus in the bottom here. And as you can see, I downloaded 17. This is the latest, the 18 version. Click on that. And then a pop-up comes and you click yes. So here's our Rufus. You can see I've already put in a 64 gigabyte stick, but you can put in as little as eight gigabyte. Uh, the image we need to find. So I'm going to select that. And here it is on my desktop. And now here's where we get the choice to choose the secure boot or the non-secure boot. And this is the one we're going for. We also need to decide, do we have GPT or MBR? So let's check that now. In the search, type computer management. So if you type computer, you can see the logos come up here already. And now in the computer management, simply go down to disk management right click on the box here where it says disk zero and you'll see it says convert to mbr so it must be gpt if you're not sure click on properties and there if you click on volumes it says partition table gpt so we know we've got gpt and my samsung also has gpt so I just showed you how to do that. So we've got GPT and there's nothing else we can change and just click start. It reminds you it will erase all the data on the pen drive. So this is going to take a while. So while it's doing that, it will probably get to halfway and pause a bit, but don't worry, don't panic. Just go have a coffee, let it do its thing, come back in 30 minutes and it'll be ready to put into your laptop and there we will access the BIOS. So let's go and do that now. Okay, so here we have our laptop and I have my USB stick here. I'm going to put it in the laptop 
I don't have to put it in the laptop now, but I'm going to just so that you can see the PC recognizing the USB stick, but it won't boot from it. So what we need to do is change the BIOS settings. So I'm going to press this power button here and then frantically press the F2 button. So let go and I'm just going to press the F2 button frantically until this appears. And what we have here is, I'm just going to move this and zoom it in so you can see better. So now we're in the BIOS, let's use the arrow keys to move left and right. And I need to go down to the fast BIOS mode and disable anything that is like a fast boot up. Then using the arrow key, I go to the right again until I go to the secure boot. Now that I need to disable. And you see the CMOS has arrived and I can now use that. I go into boot device priority and you can see the boot manager would be first, but it has seen my SSD hard drive. And also there should be a USB HDD. That's the one we're looking for. That's my pen drive. So let's move that to the top. And the way we move it to the top is here you can see it says press F5 or F6 to move it up or down. So we're going to do that. F5. Okay, so now I've moved it to the top. And all that's left for me to do is I click the escape button. I'm back to the tablet. And I just move across to exit and I can simply save the changes or I could here you can see it says save and exit is F10 so I'm going to be pressing F10 and I'll show you me doing that here F10 and that will save everything yes as you can see that took a while and now we have to set up the Windows system so let's zoom in and I'll try and focus so the next step is I have to choose which language and I'm going to choose the United Kingdom keyboard and currency click next install now And now we can say we don't have a product key because it will recognize your laptop later. Once you're connected to the internet, you'll be given the activation. It will just activate your computer automatically if you've had Windows 7 or 10 before. So I'll click don't have a product key. And make sure you go on the correct version. If you had the home version before, use the home version now. And we can accept the license agreement and make sure you go to the custom, the one at the bottom, because we need to delete all these partitions. So delete. Delete. Basically delete everything you can. So we have two hard drives here. This one is just a spare one that's inside the computer. We don't need to use it anymore for fast boot. Simply click on the largest one and click next. And now this installation will take about 20 minutes. Okay, so as you can see, that took about 16 minutes because I'm recording it on my phone. And I'm going to click yes for these actions. 
Now I did say I wanted the uh, UK keyboard, but I can change the keyboards later. Let's just get this over with. Now, in earlier versions, you were able to not connect to a Wi-Fi and therefore just log in with an account and do it later. But this one, I've tried and it won't let me do that. You will have to connect. So I'm going to connect now. Okay, it's asking me to put in the internet connection. However, make sure you click this arrow because that isn't my internet. My internet is a different one. Let's see if I can scroll down. That's my internet. Don't worry about the size of the screen. It will fix that once we connect to the internet. So there's my internet. I'm going to connect automatically. Okay, so I should be able to connect now. I'll just move down. Click next. Okay, it recognized. I'll click next. And once it's connected to the internet, it will recognize that the screen is too large and it will change it for you. Now remember, I've taken the USB stick out, so it's just running on its own you might say. And notice also this installation has taken about 23 minutes so we should finish everything under in under an hour easily. Now name my device, I'll call it Samsung 2012, I think that's when I bought it. So I'll put my name or my friend's name, Camilla. next. I won't put a password this time. Next. Now normally if you're asked to provide Microsoft with a um, an internet hotmail address so don't worry if you get asked for a hotmail and you don't have one just put no at thankyou.com a random password and then it'll say oh a glitch and allow you to have a local account. Now with the location services, I guess I'll say yes for the weather. Find my device, I guess I'll say yes. But for the rest, I'm gonna say no, the diagnostics and all that. Now in a short while, you might see the window size change So you have to click on no and then say accept the no. Ta-da! And there we have it. And you can see the screen size is really nice. There are some drivers already put on there by Windows 11. So the first thing we're going to do is check the activation. So I'm going to write activation and go to the settings. And it says, see, it's activated. And this is a 12 year old laptop, remember? So it says I'm activated. Everything's hunky dory there. And obviously we will be allowed to get updates. and you can download all of those updates. That's gonna take a while, but there's all of those updates we are allowed to have. And you can see it wants to give me the Intel driver that it thinks I need, but we're gonna do this, we're gonna do those downloads later. Maybe you wanna do them first. I just wanna show you where to go to get the IOBit driver installer. And so let's go here. So here we are, just click IOBit and it'll take you right here. And what we want, we don't need any of these, any of this, we just want the free booster driver, it's brilliant. 
and I'm not sure why you would pay for it. There probably are extra things for gamers and that, but you really don't need it. So let's just say accept, a free download, thank you very much. And I'm just going to click these three buttons here to open the downloads page so I can see where it's downloaded. Here it is. And in fact, I'll click on this and open the downloads folder. There we go. And it was 25 megabytes. It's done. So let's just install that quickly. So I've minimized the the website because it said it was still downloading, but it shouldn't be. Now it's finished, so I should be able to close that. Okay, so install driver booster. Now maybe go with custom install because then we stop uh, downloading stuff we don't really want. So create a desktop, pin to the taskbar, associate with that. Oh, okay, we'll leave that as it is. Install. Um, no thanks. So maybe this is why it's good to go into that way. No thanks, I don't want top data. Next. And we're installing the driver booster. And you'll see, as I showed you on the, um, the document, I had all 18 drivers installed. I'd, I'd done all this installation before as a dry run to see if it works. And it does work so but I'll just show you here how to work that once again it wants us to have something we'll just say no thank you and the installation is complete we don't want to learn more online just scan now thank you very much and here it goes And it's seeing all the drivers that we don't have and it will give us the latest and greatest. We'll just install one and then we'll finish it there. And you can enjoy installing Windows 11 yourself. So you can see 18 drivers outdated. And you saw earlier on that PDF it said 18 drivers successfully installed. You could just do update now, update all. Or you can update them one at a time. So I can just simply... Uh, now it says update camera. It says the current is 2006, available 2015. Now the camera does work. If I was to click here, camera. So you can see the camera does work even without the update. Oops, it's trying to install this. We don't want this. Thank you very much. Now, don't worry if anything gets installed that you didn't want. And I'll show you in a minute why that isn't a problem. You can just uninstall them. It's, it's very easy. So let me just turn off my camera thing first. And let's somehow get rid of this. Uh, yeah, we don't want this now. Just click the X there. So... They're a bit sneaky. They kind of install stuff without me wanting to. But don't worry. Here's one of the updates. Get the updates first. We'll just have this one update. And we'll say OK. It says something about disabling your um, security uh, antivirus. But remember, Windows 11 and 10 has its own antivirus. Please don't download any separate antiviruses. Windows 10 or 11 is sufficient. So here we're doing one of the updates. I just thought I'd show you as an example. And then I'm going to show you how to get rid of these extra things it's installed without me wanting it to, like the iTop VPN, iTop Screen Recorder, and iTop Screenshot. And I'll show you how to get rid of them. Well, actually, you can just right click and uninstall them. Okay, so now I've got 17 drivers that are outdated, not 18. Now, I'm going to close that. Oh, this is that record. See, iTop Screen Recorder. So it keeps throwing things at you. What you can do is simply go to con either right-click this and say uninstall, which it should say, doesn't allow you. 
So what I do is I go here and click on control panel. That's the best thing. Control panel. This is the old control panel. It's, I prefer this. And go to uninstall programs at the bottom. And simply you can see all of these ones, like the driver booster is good, but I didn't want the screen recorder, so I'll uninstall that. And it will do that. They say, yes, I want to completely uninstall it. And you should see that disappear from our screen. Yes. And you see it disappeared. The icon was here on the left and it's disappeared. Let's do the same for the iTop screen shot, uninstall, very unnecessary things. So that's it. That's all the software done. That's your Windows. Now all you have to do is install the rest of those drivers and then simply go to the settings and install all the necessary updates which you are allowed to download by the way so go to your updates and there's quite a few there to download but once you have it your Windows PC will be perfectly up and running I was running Windows 11 on this for six months before I did this video so it is very good value for money money which is zero you just download the iso so i hope you do it let me know how you get on putting windows 11 on old computers why not get in with the program you're going to need windows 11 eventually why not have the latest now forget windows 10. anyway hope you enjoyed the video don't forget to share it with other people and give it a like thank you very much and don't forget to subscribe and see you on the next video bye for now dude, he is the devil, dude, he is the devil.